our next guest is a Hallmark fan favorite who also just happens to be a very frequent guest in our home. And she is here today with one of her very favorite holiday recipes, which is sweet potato casserole. It's going to be one of your favorites soon as well. Joining us from her home in Nashville, please welcome back our dear friend, Alicia Wynn. Hey, Alicia. Hey, Debbie. I'm so happy to be cooking with you today. So am I. I love sweet potato casserole, and yours is a little bit different than the one I'm used to, so I'm very excited to get into this. So everybody loves a sweet potato casserole, really. But the one we're making today is practically guilt-free. What's so special about this recipe? Let everybody know. Well, this recipe is totally vegan and it uses very little added sugar. And what we do add is natural, but it is so delicious. Mm. You will not want to stop eating it. No, it is so good. And you're right. It is practically guilt-free. There is very little sugar in here other than mm. the maple syrup, really. All right, so we are going to start yes. with our sweet potatoes, which we have chopped up and we have in a bowl. But it's not just sweet potatoes. We also add pears. Why the pears? I add the pears because they provide a little added sweetness without having to add anything in the way of sugar. And they really deepen the flavor of the mm. sweet potatoes naturally. Now with this casserole, you wanna make sure not to over steam them because they are going in the oven. And we want to maintain um, some of the consistency of them. Okay. And um, not turn them into a sweet potato mash. Okay, you don't want them to get too mushy. Now here, exactly. we have butter, but it's vegan butter. Yes. Um, in a separate bowl, you wanna whisk together some maple syrup and your softened vegan butter. I love Miyoko's, okay. but any vegan butter will do. And if you would prefer to make it non-vegan, you can absolutely use regular butter in this recipe and it will turn out very, very well also. So vegan butter still softens, which is something that's very interesting and good to know. Is vegan butter made out of coconut? What is it made out of? So this one it ha does have some coconut. It also has sunflower oil. Oh, I see. And, um, and it's just, it has this decadent creaminess to it. I believe nice. that this is one of the ways that you can take out the dairy if you so want, and you'll never know the difference in the final product. Okay, well, I love that. Yeah. That's already starting to combine and come together very well. Now we have some spices yeah. in front of us, which I believe I can smell them. So they're very reminiscent of Christmas, I think. What is this in front of me? Too. So we have cinnamon. Okay. We have nutmeg, which are both pretty traditional um, sweet potato uh, spices. And then here we have cardamom. This is one of my absolute favorite spices. When you first taste it, you don't quite know what it is, but it goes beautifully with this. Um, to me, it almost tastes like pine or like mm. licorice, but you just want a little bit of it in there and it just adds a delicious depth again and a little extra sweetness without more sugar than you've already added. That's right. I mean, you don't miss the sugar and you don't miss... Uh, any of the things that may be overly indulgent or overly caloric if you add spices. It really helps. A hundred percent true. Um, you want to mix those separately, though, just so that you combine the spices by themselves. Okay. So you don't get a chunk of one or the other. Sure. And then I add my salt and pepper. Okay. I like to just kind of be free with it. Use a couple of grinds. I like three grinds of each for this recipe, but you can season it to taste. I love that. And I love just saying three grinds of each. I appreciate that. Yeah. That is like what a real home cook, those kind of things that a home cook says. My mom always says, just eyeball it. I say, mom, you can't put that That's in a exactly cookbook. That's exactly right. <laughs> and everyone has different flavor preferences with this kind of thing. So it's just what you feel and also your intuition. That's right. And then here we have some chopped pecans. These are, of course, optional if you have a nut allergy or you don't like pecans. Okay. <laughs> just put those in there. Final step. Oops. And then our marshmallows, yeah. right? Yes. So I'm going to transfer this into a baking, baking dish. pan. And then it is time for the marshmallows. And these marshmallows are also vegan. Yes, they sure are. I use Dandy's vegan marshmallows, which are um, completely plant-based, as you mentioned. Most traditional marshmallows are 
uh, based with gelatin, which is not a vegetarian product. Oh, right. And also, these are made with all natural cane sugar rather than corn syrup. Oh, which so is so much better. Yeah, and they melt exactly the same way, and they're just as squishy and delicious as you'd expect a marshmallow to be. Well, I'm very excited about this. I'm going over to our oven. I'm putting this in. So what is the temperature yes. and for how long? It's set to 325 and you want to cook it for 20 minutes. I wouldn't recommend overcooking it because again, we want to keep it nice and consistent. But then at the very end of that, take it and put it on the top shelf and turn your broiler on for no more than two minutes and keep an eye on it. Word to the wise, I, I set my friend's stove on fire um, oh. at Thanksgiving a few years ago because I hadn't yet written down my recipe and I just thought, oh, I don't know, three, four minutes, whatever. All of a sudden I was like, what's, what's that? And there were flames. Right. So <laughs> don't walk away from <laughs> two a boiler. Minutes, that's all. For sure. Yes. Sometimes it's 30 seconds or it'll go up. All right, this is delicious. So while I am digging into this, I would love it Ooh. if you would tell everybody about your new book that's coming out this fall. It's called Small Changes, but it makes a big difference, right? Tell us about it. Yes. So I was inspired to write this because, like many people, I struggled for years with body image and what I ate and portion control and just how I dealt with stress and pressure. And I had so much anxiety around that. Um, I was constantly wavering between one cleanse or another and different diets, different weights. I was very thin sometimes and a little heavier than I should have been and less in shape at other times. And so when I started to make small changes around what I ate and how and where I lived and just practicing a more mindful existence, I experienced big changes in my life. I became more peaceful, more joyous, and more balanced. And so this book shares some of the lessons I've learned and some of my favorite recipes that I've made up over the years. And I really hope that it will help people to find what I found, that small changes can bring big results. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Look at those beautiful pictures and the recipes in there are certainly beautiful. Thank you so much for that. And it's <laughs> true, you. once you're in tune with yourself, things really just fall into place naturally, don't they? They absolutely do. It's about balance, authenticity, and it's okay to, to not always stick to specific rules, just find your joy and live your life on your terms. That's right. You always help us find our joy, Alicia. And this is certainly helping me find my joy. Is this serving for one? Because oh, I'm going to eat the whole good. thing. For the full I recipe. You, that's the thing. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Thank you for joining us, Alicia. We'll see you soon, my friend. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you so much. And Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, too. Merry Christmas in July. <laughs> All right, everyone. This recipe is available at HallmarkChannel.com. And, of course, you can pre-order small changes on Alicia's website.